The former Minivay colliery in Danaskin once provided fossilised energy resources during its active years. But not far along from it, beholds a landmark and tourist attraction that the colliery once housed from 1980 until 2002. A piece of history that could have disappeared alongside the derelict colliery itself and the resources that were mined there. Something once thought to have been abandoned, its essence stripped and its memory banished to the wilds of Ayrshire. The Doon Valley Railway. In the 1960s, electric and diesel trains took over from steam, and eventually electric fully overtook diesel trains as well, due to electric being quieter, greener and faster, which allowed for more people to travel by train. Nowadays, rail travel is a common mode of commuting, and steam and diesel railroading are an expensive luxury for those seeking a fun, nostalgic excursion. I was born and raised in Dalmuir and Clyde Bank, which was the location of the legendary two-day blitz during the Second World War. Now, Dalmuir and Clyde Bank were targeted not just because of the shipyards on the River Clyde, but also because of the Singer Sewing and Munitions Factory, which in itself had a massive railway network that transported goods, workers and locals until the factory closed in the late 60s and the lines were lifted. Singer Station still remains, but it serves only as a passenger station. Growing up, I was also a massive fan of Thomas the Tank Engine, so I guess you could say I have diesel running through my veins. And it probably explains why I'm so excited to be making this particular episode of Hidden Ayrshire. I've always wanted to visit this location, for its nostalgic atmosphere and my appreciation of old trains, but also because it seems like a fantastic setting for a fictional film. Alas, I never got round to paying a visit. Until now. The Doon Valley Railway once played a part in the Air and Dunmellington Railway, which was the connecting branch between the Ayrshire and Galloway Railway and the Glasgow Paisley Kilmarnock and Air Railway. The GPKA Railway wanted a means of branching over the River Air after extending operations there in 1840, and the Ayrshire and Galloway Railway wanted a means of connecting Air to Castle Douglas. Despite plans being agreed upon, funding fell through and the project wouldn't be completed until the 1850s. During that period, they developed what they could afford and built the Air and Dunmellington Railway in 1848. In 1850, the GPKA Railway absorbed the Ayrshire and Galloway Railway, as well as the Glasgow, Dumfries and Carlisle Railway after completing the line. The conglomerate rebranded as the Glasgow and South Western Railway. When the Minivay Colliery ceased operations in 1976, the railway connecting Minivay to Danaskin also closed down as it was no longer required. The Ironworks already had a railway of its own, but they used horsepower instead of steam locomotives to draw the carriages before they connected to the main line itself until the ironworks closed in 1921. The passenger element of the line closed in the mid 60s, leaving the line to be used solely for freight. The Ayrshire Railway Preservation Group was formed in 1974 when it became clear that the era of steam and diesel locomotion was truly drawn to an end. In an attempt to preserve Ayrshire's industrial heritage, the ARPG managed to rescue and restore many old steam and diesel engines, including freight cars and passenger coaches, and kept them here as part of what was originally named the Scottish Industrial Railway Centre. In fact, for a while, they even saved Minivay Colliery and used it as a home for these trains before bringing them here. So why don't we go and find out a bit more about that, shall we? I met with Archie, the chairman of the ARPG, and he gave us a tour of the museum, a few facts about the railway's history, and a good old blather. So Archie, you're the chairman of the RPG. What's your railroading story? Well, I uh, had nothing to do with railways for many years. At the time when steam locomotives were being withdrawn by British Rails, I was studying abroad. And uh, when I came back, finished my degree, started work and so on, Trains were all diesel hauled or occasionally electric and I had no interest. And one day I was driving to Perth on a lovely sunny Saturday morning about 1980. I was driving to Perth 
And coming out of Dunblane, I saw a strange looking train on the railway line which runs parallel to the road about half a mile away on the left. So I broke the speed limit, I put my foot down, roared into Blackford Village where there is a level crossing, screeched to a halt just as the crossing gates were closing. And through came an SRPS rail tour hauled by 60,009 60, Union of South Africa, the famous Gressley Pacific. And I was utterly bowled over because I had literally no idea that such things still actually existed. So, so how did you start here at the, the Dune Valley Railway? Well, of course, the Dune Valley Railway is a comparatively recent thing. Um, when I joined the, the Railway Preservation Group, the site was at Minivay, and uh, I first started volunteering there simply because I wanted to be involved somewhere, and this was the, the closest to home. So what does the Dune Valley Railway mean to you? <sighs> well, it means an awful lot, really because it's, it's the history. Although I had no direct um, involvement myself, it's my family history. Four bears of mine lived in Domellington. Four bears of mine were born in the hill villages, which used to be part of the Domellington Iron Company set up here. And then I just love the, I, I love the steam locomotive and I love driving it and, uh, and I want to see it succeed. I want it to be a successful visitor attraction um, because the Dune Valley has never really recovered from the coal mining coming to an end. It needs regeneration. And the Dune Valley Railway as a tourist attraction, visitor attraction, is uh, a key player in the economic regeneration of the area. And I very much want that to succeed. What's next? What's next? Well, um, at the other end of the line where we used to have the Scottish Industrial Railway Centre, there already is the makings of a station two and a half miles away. And with permission to run on the line all the way from here to there, we could start operating uh, a proper train service with coaches that would allow people to get on and get off at each end of the line and uh, it, would, it would transform what we're currently doing, which is basically just a, a fairground ride, you might say, um, pushed up the line for a mile and brought back for a mile. Um, it would turn us into a railway that goes from somewhere to somewhere. And, and there is another three quarters of a mile beyond that that we might get access to eventually, which would, we could end up with a three mile running track, which would put us among the big players in mm. heritage railways in the United Kingdom. Sadly, there are a lot of rusty, falling apart trains and rolling stock left on the sidings, all of which are laying in wait as the ARPG try to find the time, funding and resources to restore these particular cars themselves. Thankfully, we were allowed to go over and explore. If my five-year-old self got to do what I'm doing right now, he'd be bouncing off the walls with excitement. Now, it's such a shame to see all these amazing antiques of railroad and history fading away, and it's sad to think that such a thing would have been allowed to happen to these ornaments. We're not for organisations like the ARPG and the Dune Valley Railway doing everything possible to bring these engines back to life. We wouldn't be here today making this episode. When the lease at Minivay Colliery ended in 2002, and talks of purchasing the former mine fizzled out, the ARPG held numerous meetings to discuss and decide the fate of the railway and museum. Having owned some share of land, track and local sheds not far off down the branch, they decided to move their operations along the line to Dunaskin, where they are right now. Their current home has a lot of significance, as they are situated at the former Waterside station on what was once the Air and Mellington Railway. In 2005, the railway lost its heritage funding, as well as external funds, and they had to resort to selling parts of their beloved railway, and even temporarily closed down. Thankfully, within a 10 year period, they were able to accumulate enough funds to either buy back or rent certain parts of the railway, as well as new additions to the railway. With the help of ARPG funds and financial assistance from both the Cumnock and Dune Valley Minerals Trust and East Ayrshire Council. 
Today the Dune Valley Railway has many open days where visitors can purchase a ticket to ride their iconic trains and have a wander around the museum. I mean Archie offered me an opportunity to ride one of their iconic expresses. As you can tell, it's just a little bit too difficult to say no. We're currently in the brake van, which is a modification of the classic LMS brake van chassis. We're also at the end of a good scene consisting of a gunpowder car and a mineral wagon, and the engine that's pushing us along is their Sentinel engine. Now, if you're familiar with Laurie's Mechanical Marvels on YouTube, you'll know the fantastic documentary that he made about the engine and the route they took it on down the line. So why don't you go and check it out? This is the map of the route that we're being taken on. I know it doesn't look like much just now, but the Dune Valley Railway is continuously trying to extend it. The last time that I was on a train like this experiencing a similar kind of journey was back in 2010 when me and my family went to Cleethorpes on holiday. They had a little narrow gauge railway on the beach that took you into the town and the Dune Valley Railway is actually building their own. Maybe I'll show you once we alight from the train. So this is the narrow gauge railway that I was referring to in the brake van. It may not seem like much just now, but it's only just begun and it will soon become a fantastic attraction for young children. One of the many things that the Dune Valley Railway offers for just £100 is the driver experience days, where you get a year's membership to the ARPG and you get to drive the train yourself. Speaking of which... Great news! Jim the driver has just gave me the fantastic offer of driving the Sentinel down the line. No, I can't. I must this. I don't know. God damn it! Just press that to the end and then just let go of it. <laughs> the controls take some time getting used to. But give it a little while, and soon I'll be getting scouted for Scotrail. Francis Bourgeois, eat your heart out. <laughs> when we got back to the station, I got to have a sit down chat with Jim, the driver of the Sentinel, about his passion for railroading. So Jim, how long have you been a volunteer here at the Dun Valley Railway? Just over 12 months, so when I moved up here from England, when I retired, oh. I looked for something interesting to do, found this and came up here. And what did you do before? Uh, I was a train driver. So railroading's in your blood? Well, yeah, I've done it for 47 years, so you might oh, say wow. that. <laughs> so what's, what's been the highlight of you being a drain driver? It's hard to say, because it's an highlight every day, because there's something different every day. Mm. You can't, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, don't you get bored? And I think, well, I wouldn't be there for 47 years if I got bored, would I? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel the pandemic's impacted the railway? Oh, it's, it, I, I mean, it's impacted it. No end because I mean there was no maintenance going on originally. You know you couldn't mix, and then all of a sudden we got back. We had a wonderful start to last year. Mm. With people came out. I mean because it, it, you know, apart from liking trades, it's Scottish history. It's history of Asia, not only Scotland, Asia. I mean look, you know, look around you. It's mm. it's it's fantastic. I mean Dune Dune Valley. You know it's beautiful if you look around at this at the at the scenery and all that. Mm. But it was just as beautiful when there was people working here. Yeah. You know, full time. You know, it's a shame. And then everything shut down, sadly. Yeah. yeah. We can't do anything about that. But what we can do is remind people of the heritage of the place. So, I know that you do uh, driver experiences for a yes. hundred pounds. I believe it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, why don't Why don't you put on your salesman hat and pitch it to us? <laughs> well, I don't need to pitch it to you. Look at his face. <laughs> and he got a very abridged version of the uh, driver experience. I do a lot of them, so you'll be dealing with a nice person. But it's something that you can't get anywhere else in Ayrshire for a start. It's a really good experience. It's not hard work, it's fun. Mm -hmm. You get to drive. 
you get to meet me. I mean, that's a bonus. <laughs> and of course, you, you you get a certificate. And if you like it, you also get membership to the uh, the ARPG. So then again, you might end up like me. Hopefully, a bit better looking, but you know, you could end up like me. <laughs> After a three-year absence due to the need for boiler repairs and the pandemic hindering repairment plans, the Dune Valley Railway announced in early 2023 the return of their prized National Coal Board No. 10 steam engine. This is the No. 10. It's currently going through various checks for a safety inspection, as is their Andrew Barclay No. 1 diesel shunter, aka Powfoot. We got a chance to talk to Wally, one of the drivers for number one and number ten, he formally introduced us to the engines and told us about his love for locomotion. So, Willie, what's your real road journey? Well, really, my father was a driver here. He worked here 51 years. Oh, wow. Uh, he retired in 1971. Here at the original Dune Valley Railway? Yes, when it was oh, right. when it was NCB line. And before oh, that, right. it was the Wellington Iron Company. So mm. I've been going about these lorries, these locus since I was... About, well, since I was about six years old. Fantastic. And, and you work with number 10, mostly? Well, varies. I work anywhere, but yes, I've been, I've been doing mostly with number 10 since it was overhauled here, so I'm just getting it back to normal again. And normally I would drive number 10 in open days. All right. So. And what, what, what's, what was the restoration process for it? Because I know it, it was out of action for The boiler needed years. work. Uh, so the boiler had to wait to dismantle it all, to take the tank, the cab off, the tank off, Get the boiler off, the boiler was sent down to Derbyshire. Right. Get new new tubes, new rivets. Came back up, we then had to build the whole thing back up again. Because yeah. I know you've got another one just like it, just along the way. You've got two on the track behind it, and then one in the museum. That's right. Uh, when will we likely see them back in the rooms? Well, the one in the museum was in steam before this one was in steam. Uh, it was needing work done, uh-huh. so they put it in there. This local was built in 1847. But the boiler was getting a wee bit itchy pitsy. Aye. So the one that's over there, the back, which when we got it from uh, the NCB, is a dummy cylinder, so we can't use it. Right. But the boiler for it was a brand new boiler in 1964, so they swapped the boilers over. So the boiler in that is one off number 19. Right. So the local was built in 1947, but the boiler was built in 1964. So apart from the personal connection, what does the railway mean to you? It means a lot because a lot is my main interest. Apart from my home life, of course. <laughs> I like to see the, the history of the Dune Valley and the history of this area mm-hmm. kept going. Uh, a bit of living history, as it were. Yeah. Because, I mean, I remember when these locals were a daily occurrence here. Uh, eight, eight locals every day worked out of this shed. And it's good to see it kept alive, the heritage of the area kept alive. As long as I, as long as I can possibly do it. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed you can achieve yes. it. And this locomotive shed here, it was built in 1964, is the last, this also scheduled when you because it's the last locomotive shed built for steam locomotives. Oh wow. Uh, it was built in 1964, steam locomotives were on the way out. This shed was built specifically for steam locomotives in 1964, replaced an older structure which right. stood in the same site. Okay. So it's, that's the new shed. Brilliant. Archie gave us a tour of the local shed and introduced us to the trains and carriages that they own, which include their original LMS brake van, their diesel shunter, which is their next restoration project, and their prized LMS engineer saloon car, which Archie graciously let us go inside. As you can tell, I'm absolutely loving my time here, but unfortunately, it seems we may have hit the buffers. In February of this year, the owner of the properties that the Dune Valley Railway lease announced plans to sell within a six month period, leaving the railway at a severe risk of history repeating itself. Now the owner has expressed a desire for the railway to own the buildings, but all the properties at risk are vital to the railway's operation and they're in an extremely tight time frame to raise the necessary funds. If we have to leave, we would lose, apart from anything else, we would lose the public toilets that we have on this site and with no public with no toilets available we can't invite the public onto the site and therefore we would have to stop opening to the public. That's the bottom line. 
The railway have announced that all donations and funds that they receive will be directly rerouted into raising the £250,000 necessary to save all the key assets to the railway, which include this fantastic museum. Not only that, but they're actively sourcing grants that could go a long way in helping them hit the target. So I'm asking you to please donate what you can before the 31st of July, or this place could be lost to history once again. So please go to their crowdfunding page at www.justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash save Dune Valley Railway and give whatever you can to help save the railway and keep this fantastic attraction open. Railways are more than just trains, they're a community and the following that this site has amongst locals is a true testament to the work that the Dune Valley Railway does. A quarter of a million pounds may seem like a Herculean feat, but the Dune Valley Railway's willpower and determination is superhuman and I have every faith that they'll hit their target. The ARPG are actively looking for volunteers who can come in and drive the trains, build more track and preserve the carriages. The museum is a fantastic educational and informative experience and who can beat a good old train ride through the country? Is that a gift shop? Right, thank you. The Dune Valley Railway has many open days from Easter through to Halloween as well as a very special Christmas Express. For more information go to www.dunevalleyrailway.co.uk So make sure you buy a ticket and hop on board for a journey through history and have yourself a great time while you're at it. I don't know about you, but I don't think the Dune Valley Railway's journey ends there. And I don't think ours does either. Those chimneys look interesting. That's another story for another episode. Right, I better go, because these guys are doing everything possible to convince me to become a volunteer here. And I think they're starting to win. But until next time, I'm Josh Kenavan, and this has been Hidden Ayrshire. Safe travels. We must give a very special thank you to Archie, Jim, Wally, Luke, and the rest of the volunteers at the Dune Valley Railway for their warmth and kindness. Their assistance in helping us make this episode, as well as granting us access to this wonderful attraction in East Ayrshire, has made this an unforgettable experience and it won't be forgotten. The railway is extremely lucky to have such great ambassadors. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more unique content from the Ayrshire Film Company. We have sports coverage, short films and more including other episodes on the secret attractions on Scotland's southwest coast. Comment below if you've ever taken a trip to the Dune Valley Railway and let us know what you thought of your visit. Thanks for watching.